Hi, today I'm going to do a quick little video about um, a subject that's extremely close to my heart, which is dogs. But um, it's going to be about a couple of books to kind of introduce them to you, and they're books that have completely changed my life in that they've given me an entirely new um, appreciation for dogs and for um, dog and animal behaviour and the way that we interact with them and train them and communicate with them. Um, this is something that I have kind of become really interested in the, in the last, I guess, four or five years, I suppose. Um, I always grew up with little toy poodles. I'm actually allergic to most dogs, so I always had toy poodles growing up. And when I was 18, I left home and left my um, poodle mix Mimi with my parents. And I had to wait basically six or I think six years before I um, got a dog again to, to kind of live with me because I had to wait while I was renting and while I went off traveling and went to uni and all those things before I had actually a stable enough life, I suppose, and, and place to live. Um, and ever since then, I've just become completely obsessed, I suppose, a bit besotted with my th little dog Maggie that I got. Um, Mimi, the old dog, now lives with my husband and I as well, and we now have a foster dog who is just permanently living with us as well. Um, and some of the books that I've read along the way have just completely opened my eyes and changed my life. So, without further ado, um, the first one I'm going to talk about is this one. It's called In Defense of Dogs by John Bradshaw. Um, this is one I just kind of picked off, picked up off the shelf for no apparent reason, but I'm so glad that I did because it um, it was actually a few years ago, so all of these books I haven't read for a little while, so I'm kind of going off my memory, but they've had a huge impact, obviously. Um, this one is broadly about the history of dogs and their domestication and um, the relationship between humans and dogs. And what I why it was so important to me was that there's a chapter about, um, it's called How Wolves Became Dogs, and this, it was, when I read it, it was just like this complete light bulb moment and so much made sense and basically it goes through um, the the idea that kind of was just, it was um, well, the, the dominance myth, I suppose. The dominance myth that was kind of um, disputed and kind of disproven 40 so ye or something years ago. Um, and that's the idea that Domestic dogs are descended from wolves, and wolves live in packs, and packs have an alpha, um, a dominant male, and basically there's kind of this simmering vying for dominance that exists underneath that alpha male. And, you know, everything that the wolves do is kind of vying for that dominance and trying to dislodge the dominant male to become the dominant male themselves, or the dominant dog themselves. And the theory goes that our domestic dogs come from wolves, therefore... Um, that's how domestic dogs behave as well and that's how we should relate to them. And then you get people like Caesar Milan who come along and say, well, essentially everything your dog does, all of the problems arise from your dog trying to dominate you. Um, and, you know, there's a dominance or submissive and a dog's either dominant or submissive and all this kind of thing, which is bullshit. Because as this book goes through, um, that idea about um, pack, pack dominance and things like that in wolves is actually... A load of crap basically. Um, it was based on some studies of wolves in captivity um, and there were random wolves that were put together in a zoo or something and their behaviour was observed um, and that's kind of where this vying for dominance came from. Whereas in reality wolves in the wild live in family packs. There's a mother, a father and their offspring and often their offspring from an earlier litter will stick around and help raise their younger siblings before they then go off and make their own pack or join another pack or are solitary males or whatever they end up doing. The point being, in um, in the wild, they leave. So there's no such thing as this vine for dominance because, you know, at the point where an adult or, um, excuse me, an adolescent reaches that age where they would potentially be doing that in captivity, they'd go off and make their own pack anyway. So these studies of wolves in captivity saying that there's this, you know, simmering vine for dominance is actually a completely artificial way of understanding things which results from random dogs being put together in captivity rather than the family group which is the more natural um, way that wolves live. I'm not 
not sure if I've explained that particularly well, but essentially um, it debunks the dominant theory or the way that the dominant theory has um, kind of subsumed popular culture and the way that a lot of people relate to dogs. Um, it's a really brilliant book, even if you're not particularly um, as into dogs as I am, because I understand that most people aren't, um, but it goes through um, yeah, how dogs became domesticated, our general relationship with them, a little bit about dog training and um, all sorts of things. I highly recommend it. This is a really, really great book. It's a quick and relatively easy read as well. Um, and I know that it's now in a smaller edition as well. This one was an expensive one when I bought it, but it's no longer the case. Uh, the next one, the next book, is another one that completely... If that one changed my life, this one changed it 10 million, 10 million times. It's the wrong book. This one. It's called The Other End of the Leash, and it's by um, Patricia McConnell. Dr. Patricia McConnell, who's actually a dog um, trainer and behaviourist, um, and she's absolutely brilliant. She's quite a prolific writer about dogs. Um, and this book is the first one that I read, and every time somebody I know, <coughs> excuse me, every time somebody I know gets a new puppy or is talking about it, I give them this book as a gift because I think it's the absolute best thing you can give to a new dog owner or any dog owner. Um, the subtitle is Why We Do What We Do Around Dogs, and it is Essentially, it's a book. It's about dogs and it's about how we um, interact with them and the way we should be interacting with them, I suppose. Like how dogs see the world and how um, we misinterpret what they're trying to tell us. And it's kind of interspersed with um, little snippets of examples of Patricia McConnell doing particular behaviour consults and things like that. Um, once I read this, I started... It's doing things completely different. Even the way I kind of approach dogs or... You know, if you want a dog to come with you, you kind of run the other way and they're more likely to follow you rather than like chase after them because then it becomes a game. Things that seem really simple in hindsight, but it's just, it's such a brilliant book. I found it extremely inspiring really. Um, and it's just, it's great. It also goes into the dominance myth um, as well. And it's just, it's such a great book. It's not that thick either. It's um, 230-ish pages, um, but you can definitely kind of dip in and out and um, you know read just a chapter that particularly interests you or whatever you want. It's a great book and I highly recommend it. The other one um, that I also love, um, it's another Patricia McConnell book called For the Love of a Dog um, and this is the subtitle is Understanding Emotion in You and Your Best Friend which I just find a little bit ugh, I, was, I was almost embarrassed to be reading this on the tram because it looks like I don't know it's not what it looks like, I suppose. Um, but similarly, this is about, um, this sounds ridiculous, but dog emotions. And, but it is, it's about, um, again, why dogs do what they do, how we can better understand them, how to better interact with them. Again, it completely changed my life and I have much better results. These books together, I have a much, much better relationship with my dogs and with dogs in general than I ever have before. And I thoroughly am indebted to this woman for the rest of my life. I just absolutely love these books. The last one, this is just very quick, um, these two books are by Nathan Winograd, um, Friendly Fire, it's quite a big one, it's almost A4, and Redemption. Um, now these books are about the pound system in America and they apply almost more now to Australia. Um, the subtitle of this one is The Myth of Pet Overpopulation and The No-Kill Revolution in America. Essentially it's about why um, shelters and pounds have such high kill rates and if you aren't aware of that, this is one of those things I've just, what I'm about to do is kind of like telling you as a five-year-old that Santa Claus no longer exists or never existed in the first place. So I'm really sorry I'm going to shatter your dreams and all your um, calm understanding about, you know, the way the world works, but pet pounds are a horrible, horrible place. Um, in America, you guys are doing a lot better than we are in most communities. But um, the no, this, this guy, Nathan Winograd, piloted this, um, it's called the No Kill Program, which is a bit of a um, misleading name, I think. It's not No Kill. It's just trying to reduce the amount of animals that are killed in pounds and shelters when there are people and rescue groups who are available to take them on and rehome them. Um, this book is brilliant and it will... As I said, it will probably shatter your life and if you're anything like me, it'll just kind of like light this burning fire and passion inside you and 
um, as a result of reading these and kind of learning a little bit more about the pound and shelter system here in Australia, I now, it's kind of consumes me and I am as a result involved in animal rescue and welfare and shelters and things. Um, but it just, it's when you kind of learn about something that, you know, so many pets die for absolutely no reason and it's really a case of um, poor management and a lack of awareness or care really about what happens to animals. Um, it's just shameful. So these books are, they're really great. They will shock you and make you upset and really um, frustrating. They're frustrating, I think, more than anything because you just see, um, you know, why does it have to be like this? It doesn't have to be like this. Why? Like, how can people let it be like this? Someone should do something. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things. Um, I'm getting a little bit political on you now, but... As you can see, I'm quite the dog person, um, and these books are just some of, I suppose they're not what I think about when I think about my favourite books, but they have had a huge impact on my life, and I thoroughly recommend them. If you have dogs, I absolutely recommend that you get this one, The Other End of the Leash. You will not regret it. Um, and if you just kind of like dogs and you just feel like a bit of a read, this one also I highly recommend. And if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about... Um, about the pound and shelter system do yourself a favor and read redemption or friendly fire either of them he's actually got some more books out and even just google no kill um or nathan winograd and you'll yeah there's a, a deep ocean of stuff for you to read and become enthralled by and obsessed with um yeah so look i'll stop there and this may have been interesting for somebody it may have given i don't know somebody a suggestion of something to read or it may be completely irrelevant and people might have gone dog ugh, click away i don't know i have no idea but there you go it's another video and dogs okay oh actually before i go i'll show you a dog because i have one here maggie do you want to say hi i just woke her up there's maggie